Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is the day where I show you how to do a 12 times combo infinite Archetitron. It also has even much further scaling than you'd expect on the hitbox, as well as easy ways to regain capacitor stacks. This is my Merry Christmas to you, and Happy Holidays to those that are celebrating. Hopefully, well, you'll be able to spend the time with those that matter to you most. As a reminder, uh, this is a 12 times infinite combo showcase using the tandem guidance tech that I would normally showcase on my, say, Namiskolo and Nami Solo and Karnon in the past, so you'll notice I don't gain any combo when I hit enemies at all, and I'm reliant on my pet to do so for me, which I can demonstrate if I turn AI on, since my pet does not like to attack when I'm not attacking. So come on, please do attack the enemies for me. There you go. And in the bottom right corner, you'll see my combo is actually building up at a pretty decent pace. And the reason why this works is my companion... Both has viral quills for spores and normal attacks. When hitting an enemy with quills, it counts as three extra hits for a total of four. Swipe. A mod for my companion makes them hit four times per setup on attack, letting me build combo that much faster. And once it's high enough, well, even with no buffs at all. Say I proc this with a twirl as I demonstrated in my previous video using forward block combo to activate melee influence on the crushing rune hammer stance. Now, I can just have you attack like this. You land kills, you'll notice when they survive the initial slam and then die. Dying to the dot makes them susceptible to granting me capacitor stacks. So now I can just go around like this, kill enemies, I activate melee influence again, and I spawn more enemies, and then I come back, and I just slam again, and they'll die to the dot, which you'll notice gave me capacitor stacks again. They may not necessarily have all died this time, but essentially, if you don't have enough stacks or enemies to die from the capacitor slams, then they'll instead end up dying from the dots, which gives you charges back. Typically, if you have less than six charges, enemies should be dying to the dot instead of dying to direct hit. That's just the way that the cookie crumbles. But this ends up resulting in very, very interesting amounts of damage scaling when you're in mission. Because now I can just go like this and, well, as you can see, they're dead. So let's bring this into mission to give a little bit of a better perspective on what is going on. Of course, you'd probably want to see the builds. So for my Revenant, I'm not really doing anything special. The only thing you need to know here is that for the Tandem Guidance strat, you do have to use the Melee Guidance Aura to make sure you have negative combo duration. I don't care about any of the other mods here because that's mainly to give me Mesmer skin. So pick the frame you want and the mods you want. The two near mods are pretty handy because it adds plus 200% to slam attacks. And since they are completely unaffected, affected by normal base damage mods the only other way to get it is with a seismic slam which you'll be seeing equipped on my melee which also gives 200 so this nearly doubles my damage output from 300 to 500 malt augmented again not as important strike will make it a bit easier to use the forward block combo twirl so that you can build stuff sooner on the titron itself I have the melee influence mod equipped, which I've covered in the past. Basically, the important part about this today is if you kill them outright with the boosted slam, it will not proc this arcane. However, if they survive the hit, which means they will eat electric procs since Titron is a status weighted melee and we built entirely for electric, then they will die to the dots instead, which can stack the unique passive that grants it, well, quadratically scaling damage. Basically, you do 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 60 times damage with every single extra stack you get. Of course, the Bane is important because this actually triple dips the electric procs on the setup today. And then we also have extra attack speed stacks so that this weapon is less annoying to use. A very important part of this is I do have to use focus energy because the heavy efficiency is what prevents me from losing the combo. It's a feature from what I'm demonstrating today. Um, enjoy it while it lasts, and I hope you have the rest of a good holidays 
using this. I don't really know what's going to happen after it. But as we know, DE is out of office until the second week of January. Primed Reach also helps to get the twirl better to activate melee influence. Otherwise, this is the seismic slim that I mentioned from earlier. So for actual companion, the last thing that you need here is, of course, a panzer. As I mentioned earlier with the spores mechanic from Viral Quills, this makes it so that every single... This spores makes it so that each one counts as four hits instead of just one when your panzer hits an enemy since we're unable to build combo ourselves. Therefore, that means when they use swipe, not only is it four extra hits, but it's four enemies resulting in, well, if it keeps attacking, 16 times the amount of combo scaling, which is how you saw my combo build up so quickly. How does it actually build combo? Tandem bond. Whenever your companion attacks, your melee build six combo. That's literally it. We do have reinforced bond here for shield regen tech on your companion if needed, but that really should not be necessary for today. So now I'm going to have a quick five minute demonstration and mission so you have a better understanding on how this actually works. We're going to load right into, well, actually, let's try Circulus on Lua instead so we can actually demonstrate the amount of damage this deals and why it's actually consistent. So all I got to do when I get in mission is, of course, activate the console. Why am I unable to interact with it? There you go. Mesmer skin so I don't die. But again, you can literally do this on any frame you want. Get those away from me. Let's come over here. So for these enemies that are just chilling, come on, come over here. I know you want to hit them. So we now have six combo... Come on. Come on. I just need them to hit the enemies. You can be pretty good at this. A companion, you are a little bit reliant on them to play nice. So like the first 30, 40 seconds can get a little bit hectic if they don't want to attack enemies. That is also where my electric procs are coming in handy, which is the reason why I'm swinging it occasionally like this. I just need my companion to keep attacking. And then we'll be good. We're all the way up to 156 combo now. There we go. That's our 12 times combo. So now I basically just grab this like that. They're all dead. 116 million. Hey, look. There's some more enemies over here. We twirl to... Well, it wasn't expired yet. So that's the other thing to remember about melee influence is why electric weight is so important is because you do not proc melee influence consistently if... The weight is too low. So now I can literally just go around like this, slamming enemies apart. Elevation also matters a lot. So this is one of the big weaknesses of um, this type of setup is that if enemies are on wildly different elevations, such as this platform here, it makes it very, very difficult to kill them off consistently. Otherwise, you literally just go around spamming the slams. I don't know where the enemy spawns are right now and why they are not coming over this way. There we go. So those all died. So while this is not a crazy damage cap showcase video, this is a cool way to make Titron do its solid damage scaling again while consistently charging capacitor stacks to even things that manage to survive the slam. As you can see, so long as they actually get hit, by the electric dump or the slam they die regardless the only time that they will actually survive is because they never got tagged by my hammer to start with therefore you can use this on any frame you want yes if you put it on a stealth frame zada's whisper will double dip your cell to do crazy damage as well letting you kill even without any capacitor stacks at all or also not needing to rely on melee influence but this is a bonus little tool that does not say require the quiver helmet to deal its damage scaling. And we'll also wait until an acolyte shows up because there is something I want to demonstrate where the damage actually is insufficient to deal with acolytes properly. And this is in part due to acolytes having a damage cap with a damage attenuation. That cap is raised by when you crit, but you probably also recalled that this particular Titron does not have any crit mods on it whatsoever at all. And because of that, 
it uses a lower damage cap per hit against the Acolyte. The final result is, well, yes, you can kill an Acolyte with this. It is rather inefficient to do so, and I would normally recommend bringing a separate weapon if you really want to do that. But yeah, this is going to be our last quick upload for Christmas before I get around to... Well, where are the enemies? Like, I really don't know where the enemies are. We have 424, well over 100 kills, despite the fact that these hallways are a little bit scuff. But yeah, there we go. I'm just waiting for the five minute mark to show up so we can demonstrate. Ah, there we go. Early Acolyte. Perfect. Perfect. So watch, even if I build up stacks we have what one stack on us right four stacks okay let's come over to the acolyte here so if you do a normal swing it barely does anything because we didn't crit and even if we do 160 million like that look the acolyte still does not die however luckily it does eat a fat electric dot which will eventually kill it so this is a viable way to still kill them but it is not fast anyways Let's head on over to Extract because it is time for me to go. And I'm actually about to head on our holidays dinner too as well. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of your time out there. And thank you once again for always watching my videos. As I always say, a like and subscribe goes a long way to helping out the channel. Or better yet, also feel free to leave a comment on your thoughts with the current state of the Whispers of the Wall update. What did you think about the 60 Eyes boss too as well? And as I always say, 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to bring you the best content as soon as possible, like I've been doing with the Whispers in the Wall update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. And as I always say, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.